The London Black Cab. It's one of the most instantly recognizable vehicles in the world, perhaps second only to the double-decker bus. You see them in movies and TV shows and in pictures, and it's often the first thing that people see when they get in the airport in London and the last thing they see before they leave. But where did they come from, and why do they all look the same after all these years? This is a far too brief history of the London taxi. Welcome back to All Cars, y'all. I am John, and we've all seen these iconic black taxis running around, not just in London, but other parts of the world, up to about 40 countries, as a matter of fact. So much so, we're familiar with them, even if we've never been to London or the UK. The body shape we recognize as that black taxi starts in 1958. But before we jump into its origin and developments, Let's roll back in time to see where the taxi comes from. In the, the official UK. term for these is the hackney carriage, and they date back to Tudor times. There is some debate where the term hackney comes from, but the most commonly accepted origin is a French word, which meant a medium-sized horse with a temperament suitable for ladies. It became part of the English language after the Norman conquest of England, and by the 14th century, the term was commonly used. Wealthy families would own coaches, and with their high cost to maintain, they would allow them to be hired out. As the carriages wore out, they would be sold to merchants and to taverns who continued to hire them out, often without maintaining them, and for whatever fees they could get away with. In 1634, a veteran of Sir Walter Raleigh's expeditions named Captain Bailey obtained four coaches, dressed his coachmen in uniform, and dictated what fees they would charge for specific trips, essentially establishing the taxi business model still in use today. Fascinating, while the term hackney carriage is British, it's still used in parts of the United States. Consider that the Boston police have a hackney carriage unit. The first regulations of hackneys came about in 1652, specifically limiting their numbers. Over the centuries, it was amended and the number increased as well as covering new types of carriages. By the 1760s, there were over a thousand hackneys in London, most in poor condition and expensive to run as they required two horses. But in 1823, a two-seat, two-wheeled, fast, one horse and not fully enclosed carriage design from France arrived called a cabriolet. This is literally where the term cab comes from, and these quickly eclipsed the slower and more expensive options. A newer, safer version called the handsome cab came about in 1834, and regulations were modified to distinguish between these two wheel carriages and coaches, which still used two horses and had four wheels. Interestingly, the last horse-drawn hackney carriage ended in 1947 in London, although there are still some in parts of the UK, often for tourism or for ceremonial activities. The very first horseless cabs were called Bursies, and they were electric vehicles. They were heavy, expensive, and unreliable, and were only available for about three years. Interestingly, they were not taken back to the office to recharge, but actually had their batteries removed and replaced with fresh ones, a take on an electric vehicle business model that we see some considering today. London's first gas-powered cabs came about in 1903, a French-built Prunelle, as well as offerings from a number of other British makes such as Rational, Simplex, or Herald. In 1906, a government licensing authority was set up, and one rule required a maximum 25-foot turning radius, limiting which vehicles would actually qualify. And in 1907, it became required that a taxi meter be installed, and the term cab eventually gave way to taxi, where the word taxi actually comes from a Greek term meaning payment. By 1910, motorized cabs outnumbered their horse-drawn counterparts, and by World War I, the ratio was 7 to 1. At the time, the most popular vehicle for a taxi was the Unic, a French maker of taxis and commercial vehicles. The Unic 1216 became the most popular cab for a number of years, and the word was meant to evoke the word unique. After World War I, the number of makes expanded and the licensing authority revised their requirements. Beardmore and Company of Scotland developed a taxi which was expensive but robust and reliable, and by the 20s had become the most popular version. 
However, Unic had revised their cabs and makes such as Citroen and Morris commercial. Then Austin entered the market. Austin entry was based on their 1224 model and was cheap but also sturdy and reliable and was an immediate hit. After World War II, Morris revised their cab and it was introduced in 1947 and in 1948, Austin introduced the FX3 and history was about to be made, but not quite yet. The first two prototypes called the FX and the FX2 used variations of a 1.8 liter engine that was inadequate. The FX3 got a 2.2 liter overhead valve petrol engine and an all steel body from a company we need to introduce here called car bodies. Now they were founded in 1919 and for much of their history made car bodies for makes that didn't have their own coach building facilities. Over time they worked with MG, Rover, Roots. During World War II they made airplane components. After the war they began making bodies for that Austin FX3 as well as working for others. The FX3's first petrol engine was uneconomical, so the car never quite caught on, but with a diesel version in 1954, the Austin soon became a bestseller. Beardmore of Scotland introduced their Mark 7 in 1954, but it sold relatively poorly. Then in 1958, the Austin FX4 was released, and it went on for the next 39 years <laughs> to become the most recognized London taxi with over 75,000 built until 1997. It was based on the chassis of the previous FX3, but with an independent front suspension from a different Austin model and the coach building once again handled by car bodies. When introduced, representatives of London cabbies were critical of its bulk, its size, and its rear-hinged suicide doors that felt old and out of date at the time. Of interesting note, this was the first four-door cab as early standards had required a luggage shelf on the outside that prevented a passenger door. Like many cabs, the design emphasized the ease to which fenders could be removed and replaced after being damaged as they were simply bolt-on items and the doors were specially designed to allow replacement of the outer skin. As with most any new model, there are teething problems. The hood, the bonnet in the UK, would sometimes pop open when hitting a pothole. The body stamping was too large and expensive. Several components weren't built for use as a taxi and wore out very quickly. And those easy to fix doors were later redesigned as they were complex and expensive to build. However, once the early models hit the streets, they were a sensation. The model originally had a 2.2 liter diesel engine and an automatic transmission with a manual option later and in 1962 a 2.2 liter petrol engine was made available. Through its life, larger engines, more sound deadening, better brakes, updates to meet European crash standards such as collapsible steering columns and a wide variety of modifications to handles, turn signals, or bumpers were made. In fact, some of the parts were updated simply because the original tooling wore out. Interesting of note is the sound deadening between the very vocal diesel engine and the driver. Drivers wanted less noise, but the London Public Carriage Office that regulated certifying cabs refused to allow it, at least partially from a fear of it being a fire hazard. It wasn't until 1968 when an outside group called the Noise Abatement Society pressured the PCO to allow it that Austin could finally install some. And because this is the British car industry of the 60s and the 70s, the story here gets a bit messy. Austin combined with Morris Motors to form BMC in 1952 and then became part of British Leyland in 1968. It was at this time a proposed replacement for the FX4 that was in development was abandoned. More on that in a minute. Now car bodies had been sold in 1954 to BSA. Yes, Birmingham Small Arms, which was actually a huge conglomerate that made arms, bicycles, cars, and much more. In 1971, Car Bodies bought the FX4 chassis assembly line from British Leyland and moved it to their factory, now building the complete car. Although still as an Austin. In 1973, Car Bodies was part of the sale to Manganese Bronze Holdings, a company that was founded actually back in 1881 and who by the 1960s was a major player in British motorcycles. 
That's when they absorbed BSA, and of course, this company would soon be under duress from the influx of well-built Japanese bikes. It's interesting that the end of the 70s, the then current 2.7 liter diesel would be canceled as the factory and its tooling was sold to Standard in India. A Land Rover diesel was considered, but they were warned it was inappropriate for the start and stop and slow speeds of taxi service. A 2.3 liter Ford unit was considered, but Ford would only guarantee the engine for 45,000 miles. Peugeot had a 2.5 liter and offered it to a trial, and after one year and near constant service under a variety of drivers, it suffered only one failure, making it more reliable than any engine before it in the FX4. Now, problems with Peugeot meant that they ended up going with the previous Land Rover engine, which predictably showed itself to be critically unreliable, just like they were warned. Ultimately, car bodies contracted with Standard in India to provide the original engines back to them. A new Land Rover 2.5 liter and later a Nissan 2.7 liter diesel were used with multiple other upgrades that kept the cab competitive, but the end was in sight with new emissions and safety regulations. By 1982, Car Bodies was now classified as a manufacturer and the old Austin name was removed. In 1992, Car Bodies Limited was renamed the London Taxi International, which combined Car Bodies, the dealership group, and a finance company under one umbrella. On October 1st, 1997, the final FX4 was built, ending an era. After four years of development, its purpose-built replacement was the TX1 with similar styling cues. It continued to use a 2.7 liter Nissan diesel, but when the TX2 was introduced in 2002, with mostly just cosmetic changes, they switched to a 2.4 liter Ford Duratorque engine that was found in the Transit van. While car bodies had a near monopoly in the business, a few other companies waded into the competition. In 1987, Metro Cab launched. Parent company Metro Camel Wayman had produced the Beardmore Mark 7 until 1966 and sought a replacement. Prototypes were spotted as far back as 1970. It sold pretty poorly until 2000 when its replacement, the TTT, was introduced with an advertised over 700 improvements. The company changed hands multiple times in its life until finally bankruptcy in 2004. Car bodies attempted to create their own replacements over the decades as well, as the original intention was that the FX4 was to be a 10-year design. The first attempt was codenamed AD039, and mock-ups were only up to the prototype body shell before being cancelled in that merger in 1968. In the 1970s, an FX5 project was launched. For a couple of years, they considered using a Range Rover as a donor vehicle, but by 76, they decided to take Rover's new SD1 and modify the body. By 79, it still wasn't finished past prototype stage and new leadership axed the plan. Next, the CR6 project, where CR stood for City Rover, was launched, once again using the SD1 chassis, but with using possibly Range Rover body panels. It seemed like the worst of every world. By 81, prototypes were running, and the press believed the model would be out by 84. Constant tweaks and modifications meant it now used its own body panels, and the prototypes were far heavier and more cumbersome than the FX4, and eventually it was shelved. Interestingly, the company in 2003 created Zingo Taxi, a mobile taxi hailing system that was ahead of its time, but failed when only 1,100 of approximately 21,000 taxi drivers actually subscribed. By 2006, Manganese and our old friends from China, Geely, created a China-based taxi manufacturing joint venture. And by 2008, they introduced the TX4. Continuing to use a separate frame and body, there were many changes to make it safety compliant, and one reason that there was no TX3 was because the new engine was Euro 4 emissions compliant. It was a 2.5 liter VM Motori, an Italian company, and mated with a Chrysler 5-speed auto or an available Eaton 5-speed manual. Outside the UK, it also had an available 2.4 liter Mitsubishi 4-cylinder petrol engine. 
Geely's plans to take control were canceled in 2010 and LTI changed their name to the London Taxi Company. In 2012, Manganese entered administration, essentially they went bankrupt, and by early 2013, Geely purchased the remainder of London Taxi Company's assets and saved the company. This became the London Electric Vehicle Company as a wholly owned subsidiary of Geely, and they now produce the TX with a range extended powertrain and a VN5, a range extended electric van. The replacement for the TX, and originally known as the TX5, the TX is a plug-in hybrid designed to comply with London's taxi regulations that now ban new diesel engines after January of 2018. This was introduced in 2017 with an all-new aluminum chassis and a 33 kilowatt hour battery pack, built by LG if you're interested, and recharged with a Volvo 1.5 liter turbo three-cylinder gasoline engine. When the engine is running, it's estimated it gets over 36 miles per gallon in imperial measurements, which is about 31 miles per gallon here for us in the U.S. After introduction, it was the only taxi meeting the requirements for new taxis, and by 2022, had over 5,000 been sold. While by far the most famous, other makers have moved in, with brands like Mercedes selling taxi versions of their vehicles, as well as Nissan with originally a fully electric version of the NV200 van being the first fully electric EV London black cab since that first Bercy taxi back in 1897. The Nissan only lasted until 2022, leaving the TX as the only EV available. One fact I've glossed over is the impact of Mann and Overton in this story. They were the dealership for London cabs and had an outsized influence in their development. Having a near monopoly, they not only requested and helped fund projects such as the FX4, they often participated in the repair and the recall costs for taxis. While their involvement positively uh, impacted the development of the London Black Cab, it also hindered it. Since cabs are a low profit and low volume business, any increase in sales helps the solvency of the parent company. Mann and Overton help stifle demand by restricting supply. While the car bodies factory needed to produce as many cars as possible, Mann limited their orders as the exclusive supplier to the London taxi market and thus limiting demand for new taxis, while artificially increasing demand for the used taxis and artificially increasing their price. While they may require their own video one day, I hinted at it before when I referenced that in 1992 car bodies purchased the distributorship, essentially allowing them to increase their production. Beyond the London Taxi's iconic styling and stubborn refusal to break new ground, the same rough body outline provides a reassuring thread through a decades-long history. Fascinating, there's no actual requirement that the cabs be black. Since the 1960s, buyers could choose other colors, although the standard color was black and it was an extra cost for others. Now, you can see a variety of different colors, some for advertising reasons, roaming around the streets of London, but they're still all called a black cab. Thanks for being here and thanks to my Patreons and there's a link below if you would like to help support the creation of more histories like this as well as news pinions from independent car lovers. Thanks for being here.